Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Beverly Aru, will you come forward, please? I rehearsed this for the last six weeks. <clears throat> I it up. It's two hours, so I cut it down to an hour. <laughs> In all seriousness, um, I'm here at First Church for many reasons. One of them is Pastor Steve, one of them is Reverend Judy. <clears throat> Um, I've been blessed. I've been blessed so much, it's just unreal. I've also had my bumps along the road. I started out being born premature with a brother. And my brother only lasted four days, and they didn't give me a whole lot of time after that. But here I am 70 years later and still honoring. But I was talking to Marge one day about how blessed I really am. And I haven't really realized it until I started coming to this church. And I got a little older, too, how much things have happened in my lifetime. And I'm going to give you a few examples of why I'm here. One, in seventh grade, I gave a nun a nervous breakdown. Started a rift between me and that church. Many, many years later, I got divorced, and I was asked not to participate in that church. And I'm sure there's many of you who know which church that is. It's very hypocritical in my book. But anyway, I got into a fog or a vacuum kind of just bouncing around. And I went by this church many, many times. Nothing's going on here. Of course, when I went by, it was in the afternoon. I was going to the library or going to work or something. And I didn't come on Sunday. I didn't see what was going on on Sunday or during the evening hours until a friend told me about this church. I had gone to other churches. As a matter of fact, I went to one uh, church that I had third-degree burns when I came out of there with the fire and brimstone they were preaching. <laughs> I am... Um, I was told by a friend about this church who doesn't live in the valley any longer. Unfortunately, she moved out of town. And I came over and I sat down, kind of in the middle of the church. And I was amazed at the warmth and the, and, and the, the love that was going on in here. And I was amazed at Reverend Steve saying, you know, something about God still speaking, still loves me. And, and, all, you know. and here I was wondering why I'm falling around, falling around you know, and just... God wasn't talking to me too much in that, but he was still blessing me. And anyway, um, I came here one day, and I didn't have a name tag on, and Reverend Steve, I think it was about fifth or sixth time I came, greeted me by name, and I was so surprised that he remembered my name of all these people. And it was, Reverend Judy came down to me one day when I was sitting down there, and I was sitting by myself in the pew, there was some people at the other end, and she says, why don't you sit with these people over here? And I said, oh, yeah. And I knew Jack was somehow connected with Judy. I thought they were brother and sister. <laughs> I did. I really did. And, and uh, the following week, I told Judy I'd think about it. And the following week, Judy came down, or Jack came over to me, and he invited me to sit up in front of the folks up here. And I thought, I'm being set up for something, but I don't know what. And you know, I did go up there and sit, and I heard a wonderful, beautiful voice, clear as a bell, and I can't tell you whether it's man or woman or what, but it said to me, Beverly, welcome to my world, and here I am in God's world with you. Now, I've been very privileged and very blessed, and I'm sure many of you have too. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because of the feelings that I get when I'm in this church. And I want to see this church continue, and I want to be a part of it for a long time. Um, one of the ways God blesses me is when I put a dime in the church plate, I get a dollar back. If I do a kindness and give a cup of water, I get a gallon of milk. What I'm trying to say is that for every little thing I do or every little thing, God, God has a tendency to bless me ten times over. Ten times over. And I'll give you an example of that. I'm not a hoarder. I don't keep money in the house. Very rarely do I have more than a couple of dollars. I'm also kind of a cheap person. Besides that, that comes with the territory. But I'll give you an example. And this is not about me, but this is about how God's been generous to me. I just said, I don't keep money in the house. And at the end of the month, I'm on Social Security and a small pension. I, I run out of money towards the end of the month. And one time, I was sitting out, and Bill knows that we've got a real nice apartment complex. We've got a patio in it. But I wasn't using it that day. I was sitting over in the park, and a homeless man came up to me, 
and he asked me for a couple of bucks to get something to eat. And I don't know what possessed me. I normally would say, we'll go to St. Vincent's or something. What possessed me? I said, I'm going over to McDonald's, Mickey D's there, and I'm going to buy a hamburger for myself. To come along, and I'll buy you one. He was overly um, thankful. He really was thankful. He hadn't eaten in a few days. And what really overwhelmed me was he told me the truth. He said, if you hadn't given me the, if you'd given me the two dollars, I would have gone and bought a cheap bottle of wine or something I really needed to eat. Well, I told him that this was not a date and it wasn't going to be a regular affair, you know. <laughs> didn't, want, didn't want that. I went home and on my way home, I kicked myself. Oh, I kicked myself. I said, I'm not spending money on these people and I'm not spend, I'm spending, buying burgers when I've got food at home and, I, and I'm running out of money. I've got to get milk. And milk. I went home. I have a jewelry box at home. I have several jewelry boxes. I don't wear a lot of jewelry, but I have a lot of keepsakes. Whatever possessed me later on that day to go in and open the drawer in my jewelry box, and there was a $20 bill in there. I don't ever remember putting a $20 bill in that jewelry box. I don't believe that I meant to put it there to save it for a rainy day or something, because all my money is in the bank. And I have a feeling that God put it there for doing a kindness for this gentleman who was homeless. This church runs on money. It was built by people for God's use. God doesn't uh, participate in our types of money. I guess he's got his own. But he doesn't pay the electric bill. He doesn't pay for the air conditioning in the summer. doesn't provide us with a wonderful pastor like uh, Steve. We have to do it. And I'm asking you to give as best you can. Give, give, give. Now, it's hard times. I'm having a hard time keeping up with my pledges this year, but I intend to make... I'll eventually get there, even if it takes me two years to do it. I'll get there. But God doesn't want your last slice of bread, but he wants this church to be here. At least I do. I know that. And he's told me he wants it to be here. And for us and for everyone that may come after us, please give as much as you possibly can. And it, it just a dollar, you know, goes a long way. Well, not so far as it used to. But... Um, <laughs> The stewardship season, I'm going to give, I pledge again for next year. It may be a little difficult, but I'll get through it one way or the other. This comes before a lot of things. My rent, my bills, church. Then I, and of course, something to eat. And then, then I have a little fun money left over. And even some of that I'll use for this. So please give generously with me. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God. Cool.